we're uh, ministering on the miracles of Jesus, and particularly what's made known of Christ in his miracles, and what's made known of man and man's need within the miracles, miracles of Jesus in particular. In the miracles of Jesus, we're introduced to the nature and the power of Jesus. You can become acquainted with Jesus. What things touch him? How does he react to them? What does he do? They acquaint you with him. You also learn about the need and helplessness of man. Yet the most, all of the miracles had to do, if, if not all of them, had to do with things that men just couldn't do. But Jesus could. And they also teach you about effective manners of approaching Jesus. Mm -hmm. kind, of, uh, kind of learn about those. So there's a lot here to be seen. Tonight we're going to deal with the healing of a paralytic man. Matthew, Mark, and Luke all carry this account. I'm going to read Luke's version of it and refer to the others as we proceed. The healing of the paralytic man. This is Luke, the fifth chapter. Verse 17 through 26. Now, all of the uh, gospel writers, it's a rather lengthy, I mean, it's not super lengthy, but it's just several versions they devote to this occasion, which was at the threshold of Christ's ministry. In Luke's account, Luke 5, 17 through 26, Jesus has just withdrawn himself from the wilderness where he'd been praying. And it says, It came to pass on a certain day, as he was teaching, that there were Pharisees and doctors of the law sitting by, which came out of every town in Galilee and Judea and Jerusalem, and the power of the Lord was present to heal them. Mm -hmm. And behold, men brought in a bed, a man which was taken with a palsy, and they sought means to bring him in and lay him before him. And when they could not find by what way they might bring him in because of the multitude, they went upon their housetop and let him down through the tiling with his couch into the midst before Jesus. And when he saw him, and when he saw their faith, he said unto him, Man, thy sins are forgiven thee. And the scribes and Pharisees began to reason, saying, Who is this which speaketh blasphemies? Who can forgive sins but God alone? But Jesus, perceiving their thoughts, he answering said unto them, What reason ye in your hearts? Whether is easier to say, Thy sins be forgiven thee, or to say, Rise up and walk? But that ye may know that the Son of Man had power upon earth to forgive sins, he saith to the sick of the palsy, mm -hmm. I say unto thee, Arise and take up thy couch and go into thy house. And immediately he rose up before them all and took up that whereon he lay and departed to his own house glorifying God. Mm -hmm. And they were all amazed. And they glorified God and were filled with fear, saying, We have seen strange things today. Amen. Well, may the Lord hasten such sights, strange yeah. things today. Strange things means out of the ordinary. May the Lord deliver us from the customary, <laughs> the ordinary, and the average, Amen. and the everyday. Amen. May He deliver us from that it's like a shackle. You can be shackled to ordinary. So that you never rise above the norm. And someone will come along and say, well, that's, that's kind of safe because there's a lot of the average. Well, that's, not, that's what makes it so jeopardous. Mm -hmm. That's what makes it so dangerous. <clears throat> well, let's look at the circumstances of this miracle. It actually took place in Jesus' own city, which was Capernaum, his headquarters. Matthew 9, 1 tells us that he entered into a ship and passed over and came into his own city. It's identified by Mark and Luke as Capernaum. Capernaum was not the ideal city to work a miracle. This was not the best place. In fact, Jesus said in Capernaum, A prophet is not without honor, but in his own country. 
and among his own kin, and in his own house. <laughs> Isn't it the truth? So it's not an ideal place right away. Jesus was in a house. We assume it was Simon's house. We don't know. It was in a house. And it, it was noised. It was broadcasted that he was in the house. Got out. If you can ever get Jesus into the house, the word will get out. Amen. Amen. The word will get out. That's what Mark 2, 1 says. He entered into Capernaum after some days and it was noised. <laughs> I like that word. <laughs> it was noised that he was in the house. <coughs> so where, when you don't, by all means, don't keep a secret. If Jesus gets in the house, let him get out. And as a result, a great crowd gathered here. Mark 2, 2 says, Straightway many were gathered together insomuch that there was no room to receive them. Not so much as about the door. And he preached the word unto them. That's Jesus. That's Jesus. That's the kind of thing he does. When the people gather around him, he goes to teaching. Amen. This miracle is going to be in the context of him teaching. Well, Luke 5.17 specifically says that it came to pass on a certain day as he was teaching that there were Pharisees and doctors of the law sitting by which came out of every town of Galilee and Judea and Jerusalem and the power of the Lord is present to heal them. So as he was teaching, he wasn't, uh, he wasn't teaching about miracles. This wasn't a miracle crusade whatever that is. He was just teaching the kingdom of God. The scripture tells what he taught. The kingdom of God. Mm -hmm. Expounding God. Mm -hmm. Bringing people lucidity to the subject of God. Amen. What he's doing. And the, uh, this also was a, kind of a hostile environment. The Pharisees and doctors of the law were sitting by kind of observing, monitoring uh -huh. the events of the day. They already had caused quite a bit of turmoil and quite a bit of trouble mm -hmm. with the followers of Jesus. So this was not uh, exactly a place conducive <coughs> to a miracle. If we're going to have Jesus do something for you, this is not the likely place. Mm -hmm. But if you have courage enough to get where Jesus is, whether it's a Amen. likely place or not, Amen. something something will happen. Amen. And of course, there was no room to receive anybody there. Mark 2, 2 tells us that. There was no room to receive them. No, not about the door. Mm -hmm. So you could just imagine in our own setting here, if we uh, suddenly there was a tremendous influx of people from Springfield and Tulsa and Mount Vernon and wherever and the crowd is outside there and you couldn't even get close to the door where you could just like hear a little something going on. Wouldn't that be a wouldn't that be a refreshing thing? <laughs> well this is Jesus experienced this. Maybe it's uh, maybe if Jesus was more prominent this would happen more often. Something to think about. At any rate, the point I'm making here is that in the flesh, this was not an ideal environment for something to happen. It was uh, in a bad city, Capernaum. There's a big crowd. Seemed to kind of make it damper, dampen any kind of a hope of work being done. And you couldn't get close. And Jesus was teaching. And beside that, there were some critics sitting there from out of town who were revered and honored in the religious community. So it wasn't uh, an ideal place for something to happen. I suppose they'd want to be discouraged. That'd be the kind of environment that could discourage a person. Yeah. Maybe this isn't the right time. So that's the circumstances. Now let's look at the man. The man, he was, uh, he was helpless. He was a helpless man. Matthew says he was a man sick of the palsy lying on a bed. Mm -hmm. That's our introduction to him. 
Luke says they brought in a bed a man which was taken with palsy. So he is, he is a, a victim of it. And he had to be brought to the house. He couldn't walk to the house. He had to be brought to the house. I, I can tell you that if some people, if the only way they could get where Jesus was, if they were brought by somebody, they might not likely get there. But he had to be brought. And all three gospel writers tell you they brought him. One brought him. They brought to him a man sick of palsy. Matthew 9, Mark 2, 3 said, They come unto him, bringing one sick of palsy. Luke says that men brought in a bed a man which was taken with a palsy. Palsy, we would say paralyzed. That's how we'd be paralyzed. His paralysis when your nerves don't function. Your nerves don't function, your muscles atrophy sets in and they become non-usable. Mm -hmm. My first wife and one of my daughters died of this kind of disease, mm -hmm. ALS, where your central nervous system dies. Nerves go to the muscles, the mu nerves die, the muscles die, but mm -hmm. you're just utterly helpless. So how uh, thorough this was to this man, we don't know, but he was, he was helpless. He was legitimately helpless. He couldn't walk. Someone had to bring him. And it took more than one to do it. Yeah. He was carried by four men. Mark 2, 3 says, he was born or carried of four. Mm -hmm. Four people. Kind of the unity of the Spirit here. Yeah. United together to bring him. You've probably been places where it was all you could do to get one person to bring one person. You know, that was just that was pretty much a tantamount to a miracle in itself. But here, four men. I don't know if this man asked him to bring him or if this is their idea. We're not told, but the indications are it kind of was their idea because it was their faith that uh, yes. uh -huh. Jesus saw. Him. And they were men of faith. These are four men of faith. They weren't four just neighbors. Four men of faith. All of the writers say that Jesus saw their faith. Matthew says, Jesus seeing their faith. Mark says, when Jesus saw their faith. Luke says, when he saw their faith. Jesus can see faith. Amen. <laughs> so if you have faith, Jesus can see it. Yeah. Of course, if you don't have faith, Jesus can see that too. Mm -hmm. He saw there. That's a blessed thing. You probably, you probably have people that you know that can't see your faith. Mm -hmm. Maybe they uh, ridicule you. Maybe they poke fun at you. Maybe they criticize you. They can't see your faith. You may be tempted to be discouraged because your faith can't be seen. You're not understood. And people don't see why you think the way you think. And, but don't, don't, don't think about that. Mm -hmm. Jesus sees your faith. Amen. I've actually heard people exhort others to, to live so people can see your faith. Well, <laughs> you can't hide a light or a city that's set on the hill. can't be hid. Right. Amen. Amen. Not whether people can see your face, not the issue, it's whether you got faith. That's the issue. If you have faith, Jesus sees it. Now, let's, uh, so there, these are the circumstances. They're not, not, the, not exactly the ideal city. It wasn't the ideal place. It wasn't at the local synagogue. It wasn't at the temple. It was at a house, a private dwelling. And it was a big crowd there. No room to get close. Critics, several critics were sitting there eyeballing the situation. No room to receive them. The man's helpless. Four people bring him. Now we're, when they get there, going to have to apply themselves now to get him into Jesus. Because when they get there, there's no easy way to get in. The people don't, cl don't clear the way and say, here's a path. Oh, look here. Look here. Here comes four men bringing a palsy man. Let's step aside so he can get in and get the blessing. <laughs> That's not what happened. <coughs> well, the scriptures speak to us about how they seek. Now, remember, these miracles teach you about Jesus. 
They teach you about man. They teach you, and here they're going to teach us about seeking. Blessings don't always come easily. It's just not a matter of voicing a little prayer, and then there it is. It's not quite that way all the time. God's capable of doing this. He can save you while you're sinking. I mean, that's Peter can tell you that. Amen. Well, Luke 5.18 says this, Behold, men, ye not angels. So I bring this to your attention. These are men, not angels. Mm -hmm. Angels took Lazarus to Abraham's bosom, but men brought this man to Jesus. Men brought him in a bed, a man which was taken with a palsy, and they sought means to bring him in yeah. and lay him before him, Jesus. Mm -hmm. So that's their objective. Their objective wasn't get to the house. <laughs> that wasn't the objective. The objective wasn't get in the house. The objective was get him before Jesus. That was the objective. See, some people, they don't think hard enough about these things. They come short of really what the aim is. They just maybe want to get people in within the sound or something. Oh, that's not what they wanted. They wanted to find me to get him inside where Jesus was and put him right squarely before Jesus. They sought means. Isn't mm -hmm. that good? <laughs> seek means. Some people, when you have to seek means, some people think the door's closed. <laughs> the door's closed. It's no use. See, some people only pursue the Lord if it's easy. Yeah. That's all the only time. If it doesn't rain, and if there's no pressing obligations, mm -hmm. and if everything's functioning well, and if everybody's feeling well, <laughs> and they're just under ideal circumstances, then, <laughs> then we'll seek Him then. I'll well, see you and I have to find Him. That's the only time you seek Him. I remember my first exposure to people in the Eastern world. When they were sick, they, that was when they made a special point to get to the assembly. Mm -hmm. And I asked them, because there so many sick people were there. They said, well, that, that's the time to go. I thought, oh, this is not the way we think in the USA of America. This is not it. Well, they could not come near. Now, here's what they confront. They sought means. And they said, Mark 2, 4, they could not come nigh unto him for the press. Yeah. But they couldn't even get close, much less in the house. Yeah. They, they didn't go home, though. Remember, they sought means. Oh, we, can't, we can't, like, walk in. So we write that <laughs> off. We can't ask somebody. Would you step aside, please, so we can get in? Mm -hmm. Nobody's going to cooperate with it. So Luke says, when they could not find by what way they might bring him in, because of the multitude, there was no obvious way, <coughs> they went up upon the housetop. Well, they apparently he weren't standing up there. Yeah. The insinuation is, if you want to get to Jesus, there's some spot that's not crowded. Yeah. There's some part that's not crowded. There's a way you can get close. You might have to go up <coughs> to get there. They didn't go down the basement. They went up on the roof. Mm -hmm. yeah. Amen. And how eager are they? Well, when you get up there, how eager are you to do something? He said, <laughs> Mark 2, 4 said, they uncovered the roof where he was, yeah. and it said they broke it up. Mm -hmm. took, took it apart. We say. Took it apart. They were like tiles. I, I, I don't know, there's like large squares. It had to be some pretty hefty work. Mm -hmm. you know? Took some effort to do this. but they And you had to figure like, you had to kind of figure out like, where is, where is Jesus at down there? You're going to lower him down. You want to lower him down. He's over on the other side of the house. So, that, so in, in breaking up this roof, they must have done some preliminary work, looked and see about where they should open it up. Because their aim, remember, their aim was get him before Jesus. Amen. Not just get him inside the room. Get him before Jesus. And then the scripture says, they let him down. They let down the bed wherein the sick of the palsy lay. Mark 2, 4. <laughs> what a picture. <laughs> I don't know how big the man was, but it was an adult. Mm -hmm. It was an adult. 
Luke says this, They let him down through the tiling with his couch into the midst before Jesus. How's that for being precise? <laughs> so they kept him on the couch, let him down through the tiling, the hole they made in it, in the midst before Jesus. There he is. Now, that's one thing to read that. So it would be another thing to do that. Yeah. That'd, be, that'd be something else to do that. We're showing here there are some things about the kingdom. That there are some things you have to extend yourself. Mm -hmm. See, some people, all they had to do was call out, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me! Uh -huh. See, they got, they got the Amen. answer. See, not, it's not always that way. Right. Sometimes you have to seek means. Sometimes it takes a bit more than a prayer meeting from one gathering together and bringing someone to an awareness of Christ. Sometimes you have to put yourself into it and think and seek means and break up some tile and disrupt some normalities mm -hmm. to get things to uh, get someone to Christ. Now, of course, with all that effort, <coughs> it was rewarded. Jesus notes all this. If this Im if this kind of thing impresses you, I'd be rest assured that it impressed Jesus more mm -hmm. that they did this. Amen. All of the writers say Jesus saw their faith. Not their deed, their faith. Mm -hmm. See, Jesus looks at the deed, but the deed's not what he sees. He sees what moved them to do that. Amen. Mm -hmm. What moved them to do that was their faith. Matthew says, Jesus seeing their faith. Oh, I love it. Mark says, Jesus saw them. It's the four men. It's the four men. Saw their faith. Luke says, he, and he saw their faith. Now, what would people in the house, what did they see? What do people see in the house? What do these scribes and Pharisees, what did they see? They probably saw a little bit of noise overhead, roof coming apart. Mm -hmm. little, little commotion up there. So all of a sudden, here comes someone being lowered down. you got to kind of think what this looked like. Mm -hmm. Here come a man lowered down in a pallet before Jesus. Uh, imagine, can you just imagine that happening in the, in the middle of the church service? Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, there's a little bit of noise overhead, and here comes, here comes a bed down, a man laying on it. You notice he doesn't mention anything at all about what the people thought. Because <laughs> it really doesn't make any difference what the people think. Uh -huh. When you come to Jesus, it doesn't make any difference what the people think. The point is what did Jesus Amen. think. That's the point. Amen. And you know this already, but when you make it your aim to yourself come to Jesus or to bring someone to Jesus, you're not thinking about what the people, what are people going to think about what I'm doing here? Is what is Jesus going to think about what I'm doing here? Well, he saw their faith. He has a heart for it. And the first thing Jesus does, the first thing he does when he sees their faith, the first thing he does, he doesn't do what they came there apparently for him to do. He gets the first things first. He says. Uh, Matthew said, Son, well, that'd be pretty good to have Jesus call you that. Mm -hmm. Son, mm -hmm. be of good cheer. Mm -hmm. Thy sins be forgiven thee. Mm -hmm. Mark says, Son, thy sins be forgiven thee. Mm -hmm. Luke says, Thy sins are forgiven thee. Well, it means be mm -hmm. means the same thing. That thing is that when he said be forgiven, he caused it to happen. Mm -hmm. yeah. Amen. Jesus can cause sins to be forgiven. Mm -hmm. So you don't, you, don't, you don't want to be so overcome by your sin that you can't see this, that Jesus can cause sins be for, to be forgiven. They bothering you, he can cause them to be forgiven. I says, be forgiven thee. First things first. It's a good practice when you come to the Lord Jesus to... And you're seeking perhaps for him to give you some special blessing and grace. Perhaps even his healing like this man here. Some special guidance. Some special provision. It's a good practice to get sin out of the way first. Mm -hmm. To make sure that your sin isn't like a blockage. Uh -huh. That he sees your faith, not your sin. <laughs> Amen. Amen. I says be forgiven thee. This is the reward of faith. 
The scriptures tell us that this is like, this is kind of the norm of the kingdom. And when you come to Christ, forgiveness of sins is like something that's built, in, built into it. 1 John 1 and 7 says, If we walk in the light, as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another, and the blood of Jesus Christ, his Son, cleanses us from all sin. Amen. It's like a, this is like a part of mm -hmm. spiritual life. And a couple of verses later, it says, If we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins. But in verse 7, it says, If you walk in the light, this is what happens. Mm -hmm. This is what happens. When you walk in the light, there's like a cleansing. Mm -hmm. effect. Now, it's lived out here in this man here. This man, it was lived out. Mm -hmm. Jesus first cleansed him, which is the deepest stain. Mm -hmm. Wow. The deepest stain is what happens to the heart of a person. Yeah. Sin. That's the deepest stain. And he, he said, I sins be forgiven thee. And, of course, another effect, the man was made whole. Completely whole. <clears throat> Matthew says in Matthew 9, 6, that Jesus said to take up thy bed and walk and he rose and departed to his house. He was made old. Mm -hmm. He came in on the bed. He left carrying the bed. Amen. Mm -hmm. Mark says immediately he arose, took up the bed and went forth before them all. Hmm. And Luke says immediately he rose up before them and took up that whereon he lay and departed to his own house. So he was made, he is made whole. Join the reward of faith here. And he returned to his house for testimony. When he left the house that they left in the morning, he was on a bed. <laughs> what better place to go back carrying your bed than the house you left on a bed? What better place, huh? If you come to Christ and you left a bad environment and you're made whole, it's good to go back and before the bad environment and in a state of wholeness mm -hmm. as a testimony before them. Now there were certain effects to this miracle too. Certain effects. It caused a marveling among the multitude. They just were not accustomed to this sort of thing. Matthew 9, 8 said, They marveled and glorified God, which had given such power unto men. A man did this. <laughs> A man did this. Now it was God manifest in the flesh. You see, they weren't aware of all the ramifications of this at the time. And again, Mark 2.12 says, They were all amazed and glorified God, saying, We never saw it on this fashion. Mm -hmm. Amen. I mean, we have been to a lot of gatherings. We have been to a lot of synagogues. Mm -hmm. We have heard a lot of Pharisees. We've heard a lot of scribes. But we've never seen anything like this. Amen. Luke said, Luke 5.26, They glorified God and were filled with fear. Mm -hmm. How's that? saying, we have seen strange things today. So we'd say, this is not normal. Mm -hmm. We didn't have a normal day today. Isn't that a blessing when you... <laughs> we've experienced this from time to time. When we were seeking to increase the frequency of this. We say, well, this was a good gathering today. This wasn't a normal gathering today, was it? Mm -hmm. Well, that's how they felt. It was a normal. Amen. Of course, it never is when Jesus is there. And one other thing that the effects of this miracle, the man himself glorified God. Luke 5, 25 says, Immediately he rose before them, took up the bed, run, he lay, and departed to his own house, glorifying God. Yeah. I just would have loved to have been there. Amen. To hear what he said. Reminded me of that lame man that Peter and John healed at the gate. Beautiful, remember? He went in the temple uh -huh. leaping and praising God. Mm -hmm. I can't imagine this fellow... Rolling casually out of the house, 
indifferent and holding a bit of odd conversations along the way. He must have been in a state of spiritual ecstasy Amen. before them all glorifying God. Mm -hmm. <laughs> ah, but there's something else to be seen in this miracle here. That <clears throat> was their reward for faith. We learn that flesh can't be satisfied. Flesh can't receive the things of God. Even Amen. trained flesh mm -hmm. can't do it. Uh, here's the, uh, remember we, the people said, we've seen, we've seen strange things today. We never saw it on this fashion. The man himself, he's a glorifying God. It doesn't tell us what these four men thought, but I bet they were praising the Lord. Mm -hmm. now, here's, what, uh, here's what certain of the scribes said within themselves, this man blasphemeth. Mm -hmm. When he said, thy sin be forgiven. <laughs> That's what they did. Right. Mark 2 6 said, They reasoned in their hearts. Why did this man speak blasphemies? Who can forgive sins but God only? Mm -hmm. Get the picture of flesh here. Son of God can be right before right before flesh, the Son of God. He can say things that are true. The man on the pallet may be convinced of it. The four men in the roof may be convinced of it, but you can't convince flesh of it. Amen. You may go about and say, my sins are forgiven. You'll be surprised if people say, ah, well, you know, are you really sure? Mm -hmm. Some may say something like this, well, I'm not sure, and if I'm not sure, how can you be sure? If I don't know. This man speaks blasphemies. Flesh cannot be satisfied. Why? Why can't it? Because the carnal mind is enmity against God. Uh -huh. It's not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. Yeah. Flesh cannot appreciate Jesus. Amen. Amen. Now you may dumb down the affairs of the church to make flesh comfortable, but it will uh -huh. never make flesh able. You can never get flesh into a position where it will appreciate Christ or appreciate forgiveness or appreciate justification, or appreciate right. divine power, you can't get flesh into that position. Right. It won't happen. And a person who, that makes an effort to do that has revealed their own carnality. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we also know 1 Corinthians 2.14 tells us that the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, neither can he know them, for their foolishness. See, it's, it's absurd. Right. All of this is absurd to those who aren't born again. And they may be cultured. They may be cultured and be polite. Say that's nice. and We think everybody has the right to their own view of things. Uh -huh. But when it gets right down to it, they'll be like, they'll be like uh, some of the relatives of our dear beloved brother Yehuda. Bring in the casket. Hmm? If you've got uh, worldly friends and you begin to exhibit spiritual life, don't be surprised if they kind of withdraw. You can't, flesh can't see these things at all. Now that's exposure to the miracle. We learn a little bit, as I said, about uh, Jesus, that circumstances don't hinder Jesus. One place he said, Woe to you, Capernaum! If the works had been done in Sodom and Gomorrah, they'd been done in you, he named Bethsaida also, they'd have remained to this day. And that's, that's where he was. He was in, he, that's where he was. But it didn't hinder Jesus for a person who had faith. A person who has faith, you become superior to the circumstance. And we learn from this uh, that Jesus may appear obscure, but that is, doesn't mean he's inaccessible. That does not mean he's inaccessible. Hard to get to Jesus does not is not the same thing as can't get to Jesus. Yeah. It's not the same thing. Don't look at an obstacle as a brick wall. Seek means to come to Jesus. And we learn that when Jesus is teaching and we're learning from him, this is an environment in which great things can happen. And we learn that helplessness doesn't mean hopelessness. Amen. <laughs> Not at all. Now I want just to draw seven brief conclusions here. 
The perceived presence of Jesus is an occasion for hope. Amen. If you can sense that Jesus is there, it will ignite hope. Mm -hmm. It's like a man lights a candle. Mm -hmm. Jesus is there, the thing's not hopeless, you're not hopeless, circumstance isn't hopeless, your situation's not hopeless, not if Jesus is there. You do have to get where Jesus is. Mm -hmm. And when you are, it's not a hopeless situation. And there are things that one person can't do. It takes it take four, three, or three, maybe more. Mm -hmm. Just one person can't do it. When Jesus went in the, further in the garden to pray, he selected three men to pray with him. Mm -hmm. Peter, James, and John said, pray, lest you enter into temptation. Mm -hmm. Three men. Not just one, three. There's something about combined efforts of people. Mm -hmm. They didn't join in the effort as fully as they could have, but there was a man one time on a gate beautiful that was lame from his mother's womb and took two men, two men came along. Two men, Peter and John, two men came along and helped him. So they see they here is four. So sometimes it takes more than one. Mm -hmm. And faith never escapes the attention of Christ. Amen. I can tell you from personal experience that there have been times when I just, aside from my own wife, and when my children got a little older, some of them, it just wasn't anyone around that you felt confident, knew what knew what you were going through, mm -hmm. or could have sensed your deep quest for God somehow. You were like an oddball in every kind of circumstance. Uh -huh. Wherever you were, you were like a strange. <clears throat> and people looked just kind of askance at you. You were eccentric. Mm -hmm. When uh, one school president told me he didn't want me to be eccentric. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, the Lord delivered me from that <laughs> situation not being eccentric from the person who thought I was eccentric. Yeah. <laughs> Although flesh objects, Jesus always has the last word. Amen. Now there's two things Jesus said to this man on the, that was sick of palsy. First thing he said was, Son, be a good cheer, your sins are forgiven you. Second thing he said was, pick up your bed and go to your house. Mm -hmm. In between those two things was this, were these grumbling scribes and Pharisees. Mm -hmm. Because they couldn't stop the second saying. Yeah. <laughs> they couldn't stop it. They raised a kind of a serious allegation. A blasphemy. Ooh, it's a serious allegation. But it didn't stop. This didn't stop Jesus from doing yeah. what he did. The flesh may object, but flesh can't stop the blessing. It can't do it. Let's see that. Here was a man that received a blessing in an unlikely place. Be like being saved at the first church of the Frigidaire. Yeah. I don't think it could happen, but see, it can happen. If Jesus is there. That's the test. Jesus is there. Amen. And even in a place Jesus upbraids, he'll still perceive faith. <laughs> it's a great blessing. And don't forget this, uh, beloved brethren. Helplessness is not hopelessness. Yeah. And don't you treat it like it is. Mm -hmm. If you're helpless, don't pray like it's hopeless. Mm -hmm. Seek means. Yeah. Seek means to get the hopeless condition before the helping Christ. Seek means. In fact, in your prayers, you can in your prayers like probe means. We might say present your case to the Lord. Mm -hmm. Or you might call it reasoning together with God. Mm -hmm. Or you might call it casting your burden upon the Lord. There's a lot of different ways you can look at it. But you're seeking means to get before Jesus. Because if you can get before Jesus, knowing what you really are, you will not leave the same. Mm -hmm. You will not. Jesus is that kind of Christ. When he sees faith, he does something about it. But see, you have to get before him. He didn't see their faith was up on the roof. Right. He saw it when the man was down at their down at the feet. That's when the point was made at least. Well, I lay before you that uh, 
And a marvelous miracle, the paralytic man. We don't know his name, but we will someday. In the glory, can you imagine someone coming up to you and saying, you've no doubt read my record, my record in three of the Gospels. I'm the, I'm the man that was let down through the roof. And you and above all of them, wouldn't that be a time? Well, you're the man that was let down through the roof. I certainly wouldn't want to be someone who said, well, I never read that. <laughs> Which teaches you that in this world, you may remain a nobody, unknown. It's like this man. For centuries now, nobody knows who he was. Nobody knows where his house was. Nobody knows what his family state was. All we know about this man was he was paralyzed when he come in and whole when he went out. Amen. You're the same way. We'll look forward to seeing him.